So now that our publication detailing Mix Wild has been released, I decided to post a quick tutorial just kind of going over how to actually use Mix Wild to run a simple multi-level model uh, using intensive longitudinal data. What we'll be using here under the help section is actually the Mix Wild example data set. You can go through the user guide to kind of get a more detailed uh, orientation of what I'm doing uh, in you know a lot greater detail and a lot additional a lot more model circumstances and I'll go over those in later tutorials but for this one let's just download this example data set mix wild example data set we'll just save it to our home folder going back to model configuration you'll see this little menu here that kind of tells you about how to actually create files for mix wild data files you'll see that there's uh, kind of a generic CSV file setup uh, missing value codes should be numeric only um, and you'll be able to specify that a little later and then again the first row should be column names and that's just to make things easier for us uh, when we read your file in so go over here we load the file and what you see here is the initial model setup all these menus up here are going to be locked out you can go over here to view your data to make sure everything looks good and you can see here we got some missing values negative 999s so that answers our first question here does your data contain missing values yes it does coded as negative 999 for the title let's just put a simple multi-level model again looking at our data things look okay and you'll see post estimation here you're actually locked out of this menu this is something that we're developing a little later to come under MixWild 2.0 as are some of these grayed out menu items so for instance the stage one outcome right now is limited to being continuous but later will allow dichotomous and ordinal stage one outcomes next we'll specify a random location effects basically do we want covariates to estimate the intercept only so the between subject variance or do we also want to look at the slopes, so the relationship between a variable and the outcome for each individual, and also the intercept. We're, in this case, to be simple, just going to stick with intercept only, which is what you would see in a standard regression command, such as mixed in Stata. Similarly, over here, we have estimates of random scale, which is the between, within subject variance, sorry, within subject variance. In this case, to speed up this process, we're actually going to say no. Uh, this is a really neat tool and something I'll go over in later tutorials, but for this one it's going to take a little too long to go over and run the model and everything like that. So we're going to say no, we're not interested in the effects of any covariates on random scale. Next, there's this entire stage 2 model, which takes parameters, including random location, slope, and scale, from stage 1 and allows you to use them in stage 2. Uh, which is awesome. Um, you get to put them in as interactions, main effects, predicting uh, stage two outcome. Uh, later, you'll be able to actually do multi level modeling at stage two. Uh, and currently, you can actually do continuous or dichotomous or ordinal at stage two. Uh, but again, to keep things simple, we're actually just going to say no to stage two and it collapses everything so it gets out of your way. And we're going to move on to the next section. So under stage one configuration, you kind of see the general overview of the menu. Top, you see stage one regressor, which just tells you you are in stage one configuration. The left side is all your level one or time varying regressors. And the right side are all your level two or time invariant regressors. Up here, it tells you about your selected model configuration and your stage two outcome. In this case, we selected none intercept. And you can go back here and look at these but if you want to go back and actually change all of them, you have to reset the entire model. So for the ID variable, we like to pick the first variable in the data set. If it's not that, you can change it, but in this case it is, so we move on. For our stage one outcome, again, stage one has to be a time varying outcome. So in this case, we're going to pick negative affect. So we're going to be looking at what predicts or what is correlated with negative affect. Because we didn't pick random scale or within subject variance in the initial model configuration we can't specify the relationship between the mean which is this here and the within subject variance otherwise you'd be able to specify that 
And again, I'll go over that in an additional tutorial, or you can read about it in the user guide or the new publication. Here we can configure regressors, and this is similar to other statistical software, a very, very familiar kind of workflow. We're going to add age and sex as our time invariant covariates. And we're just going to look at positive effect as a time variant covariant. When you do that, it brings it over to level one and level two as chosen. Now the difference here, two things you'll notice. On the left side, you'll notice that there's a disaggregate column. What that lets you do is take the positive affect effect, so the effect of positive affect on mean between subject variance or within subject variance of negative affect and disaggregate it into the between and within subject components. Uh, there's the Cran and Bauer article on the disaggregation of between and within subject variance effects. Uh, and since we're only going to be looking at mean, we're going to want to select positive affect, which opens up the disaggregate command. And we're going to say, yes, we want to disaggregate because we're not interested, not only interested in what, how someone is, someone's positive affect is associated with negative affect for their own selves, but also comparing it, their general average against the grand mean average, or the grand mean. Uh, and again, we're not going to look at between subject variance and within subject variance to keep things simple for now. Uh, again, that's for something later. Over here, level two, I mentioned that there were two differences. One was the disaggregate. The second is you'll notice that there's the inability to select within subject variance. Uh, again, age and sex, because they're time invariant covariates, um, they can't possibly affect within subject variance because they're consistent within subjects. So they are grayed out here. They can still affect between subject variance though, so you can select that if you wanted to, but we're going to again skip that and we're going to select mean here. And again, just to pick up some of the terms between subject variance is the location effect. Under options here, you'll find a number of different advanced options, largely to do with convergence. Uh, these ones here are the intercepts in the models, and you're going to probably want to keep these in unless you have good reason to take them out. Over here you see convergence criteria, quad points, adaptive quadrature, maximum iterations, and ridge, which again are all uh, advanced features that once you start to use the software a little bit more, you'll understand why you would need them. Uh, and we have detailed descriptions in the manuscript about when you'd want to change these. Uh, here, you can standardize all regressors if you're looking at centering your variables. Although, again, that's something you might want to do on your own, um, regardless, it's here as a feature. Uh, this discard subject with no variance, well, I'll bring it up a little bit later when we're doing stage two modeling, but for this tutorial, it's not necessary. Basically, what it does is it drops subjects with no variance when it goes over to stage two, which is super helpful with convergence, because sometimes you get into a position where you're not able to have a model converge, and this will drop those uh, bad apples from the sample. Uh, here, for resampling stage two, we generally resample stage two to produce better results, uh, and 500 times, it doesn't take very long. Uh, it's just a multi-level model that's done at stage two. That's something we're not looking at here, um, but just make note of it. Uh, if you're on Windows, you would see an extra little box here that says use 32-bit executables. The Mac OS doesn't support 32-bit, uh, and we know that there are some people that are running old 32-bit Windows machines, so we gave them the opportunity to use 32-bit executables. Um, if you want, they're available here, but for the most part, you should just be running this in a 64-bit environment, and that's generally what we're compatible with. Once that's all set up, you can actually save your model here as an SER file. Example model.ser. And then that allows you to load it over here under model configuration when you reset the software, or open up something again. That way you don't lose all your progress. After you're done, you can either clear stage one. Don't know why we'd want to do that right now, but for whatever reason, if you wanted to, you could clear it. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to run it. What you see here is a definition file. If you go into the sort of intricacies of the program, you can figure out what this file does. 
it really corresponds to exactly everything we did in model configuration and stage one configuration and basically tells the back end, which is Fortran, how to run statistical, statistical analysis. Uh, you don't have to worry yourself too much about this, but this is something we might look at, for instance, if there's error logs or anything like that. Um, you can also save it to duplicate it if you want to work outside of the GUI. So once you run the model, um, this one is going to be fast because there's no random scale. You get an output. In this case, there's no stage 2 output because we didn't run a stage 2, so you'll just be kind of limited to the stage 1 tab. You'll see a lot of sorry, descriptions about the data set, number of level 1 observations, level 2 clusters. Um, down here, you'll see the mean of negative affect, minimum, maximum. You'll see the mean of the model uh, covariates. Here, you'll see positive affect and broken into between and within subject forms. Um, and then since we didn't have any between subject variance model covariates and within subject variance model covariates those are empty and down here because we only looked at a model without scale parameters this is the only model you'll see and this is essentially a replication of what you'd find if you ran this exact data in Stata or R or SPSS so here we see age and sex are not associated um, with negative affect, uh, and we see between subject variance or the positive affect at the between subject level is meaning individuals who are in general more happy than others are uh, less likely to be have negative affect, uh, and then it's also inversely related at the within subject level. So if you have a greater positive affect than your average kind of level of positive affect, you are going to have less, you're less likely to have a greater amount of negative affect. So again, this is kind of expected at both between and within subject levels. And here we see the alpha, which is between subject variance parameter, and tau, which is the within subject variance parameter. And you can use these actually to calculate ICC by uh, taking the between subject over the summation of between and within subject determine the extent to which between subject is actually contributing to the variance. Um, I didn't do the math on that one here, so I don't really know what it is, but you can figure that out pretty easily. Um, and that's kind of it for a very simple multi-level model in MixWild. Uh, thank you for getting to the end of the video, and stay tuned for the next one in the series. Um, and if you want to check out our publication, it's in the link below.